Bob Asbury says, I'm a 58-year-old American redneck who never went to college a day in his life, but I feel like I'm getting a world-class education every day. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. You are very cool. Well, thank you. I don't know how cool I am exactly, but I'm, I tell you, man, and this is the dead truth, I am absolutely thrilled that I have the opportunity to provide educational resources to people all over the world. It's a dream, you know, really. I mean, it's an absolute privilege. So when I get letters from people like you very, very frequently from all over the world, you know, and the fact that now we have the technology to allow people in principle to have a world-class university education is mind-boggling. And here's something I think is absolutely comical, and I've been pursuing this with a group of people that I've been discussing um, I've been having intense discussions with some in Silicon Valley and some in Montreal and some in Toronto. You know, the, here's the university situation in many ways. Number one, they're putting students in debt in a tremendous way in the United States uh, over because of overpriced education. They don't let the students um, declare bankruptcy because of the debt. And so it's basically indentured servitude. And so then students come out of university indebted heavily at the time of their life when they should be relatively free of financial burdens so that they can be creative and entrepreneurial because you're going to do that when you're young, generally speaking. Then the universities have become administratively top-heavy and, and stultified because of that. Then they've abandoned their commitment to the humanities. Right? Then they're not utilizing modern technology to extend their reach as broadly as they possibly could. Then they've They've, uh, in some sense, abandoned their responsibility to do accrediting properly and devalued the value of the degree because they treat their students like consumers and, and, and inflate the grade currency. So, to me, that's a perfect storm of error. And so I see an opportunity emerging right now where the intellectual property that's related to the true humanities, and that would be at least in part the Western cultural canon, could just be taken out of the university's grip and provide it to people in high quality form online. And if I can crack how to teach people to write and then also to figure out the accreditation problem, which I don't think is a, 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 a it's not an overwhelmingly complex problem. It's complex, but not overwhelmingly. Then there's no reason that the university can't move, to, can't move online. And I would say the true university exists where people are pursuing education because they bloody well want to get educated because they know that being sharp and articulate and historically informed and philosophically wise and all of that makes their lives better, makes them better citizens, makes them more responsible. And so I want to follow the university where it goes. And as far as I'm concerned, the university is where people want to listen to wisdom. And I'm going to try to dispense wisdom to the degree that I'm fortunate enough to have access to it. So um, anyways, Bob, like I'm thrilled that I can be of service to you and um, it's a real privilege. And so, and we're going to do more of that. So 